Boom, <laughs> what's going on everyone? It's Steve Larson, welcome back to Sales Funnel Radio. I am in Miami, about to get on a cruise tomorrow morning. But uh, today I wanna talk to you guys about what happened the day after my million dollar day and how you can avoid some of the pitfalls that I had to go through. I've spent the last four years learning from the most brilliant marketers today. And now I've left my nine to five to take the plunge and build my million dollar business. The real question is, how will I do it without VC funding or debt, completely from scratch? This podcast is here to give you the answer. Join me and follow along as I learn, apply, and share marketing strategies to grow my online business using only today's best internet sales funnels. My name is Steve Larson, and welcome to Sales Funnel Radio. What's up, guys? Hey, it's Steve Larson. Um, Hey, I am... uh about to get on the Two Comic Club cruise. Very excited about that. It's the coaching club uh, cruise that uh, ClickFunnels puts on. And um, I've had a lot of fun. Uh, just, you know, got, I had to get here, because of flights, I had to get here like half a day early. But um, I mean, come on, it's not been bad. So um, anyway, back in September, I went and threw a huge event. And uh, in my event, I was, uh, we had 600 people there and it was my first uh, million dollar day. And uh, when we did the million dollars, you know, you can imagine there were two things that happened. The first thing was it was 1.6 million in a day, but the first thing that happened was utter sheer excitement. Oh my gosh, so exciting. This is so incredible. But the second thing that happened was also what other people also tell me about. Um, it's not that cool, <laughs> okay? It's, uh, it's a kind of a club card, but besides that, after about four seconds, I was like, holy crap. All right, well, <clears throat> I'm hungry. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it, there wasn't a lot to it after that. Um, and so, but what, but what happened after that is something that I was not prepared for. And I didn't, I kind of thought that it would happen a little bit, but not to the extent that it did. It, it actually was very, very uh, rough. Okay. So, so here's what happened, right? We do all the sales. It's awesome. We start onboarding the people. That part goes great. But I found myself very unprepared for the volume of sales. We didn't think it would be that much. And so <clears throat> we had to go upgrade our systems. So I didn't have enough fulfillment. Um, I remember waking up the next morning and realizing like, oh my gosh, like I need to over deliver for these people. How can I do that when there's that many clients? And how can we track this, right? I mean, I I thought it would sell, I just didn't think it would be that much. And um, so, so we started building more fulfillment, more processes and more systems and such. And um, and we spent probably the first, I don't know, um, six, weeks doing that and that sounds like we're going slow but we were hauling because there's all these other parts that we were still running as well right um so we go and we start building all these processes we start putting all these things together and in about two or three weeks into this that's when we start decided that's when we're gonna start running payments like we told everybody hey we're gonna start running payments for you it's gonna be amazing the payments are gonna be cool you know it, it, they, they agreed to ahead of time we had all the paperwork finally signed all those uh, bits and pieces but do you know what happens when payment processors see you doing around 150 to 200 grand a month and then suddenly you try to run 1.6 million? <laughs> you look like you're laundering money. You look exactly like you're uh, um, doing something very illegal and shady. So everything basically got frozen. The money didn't get frozen, but I didn't have a single payment processor that could actually process the payments themselves. And I was like, what? Like it was, it, it ended up being about $920,000 that we couldn't run. And, and it, which is crazy, right? Um, it is, uh, as I film this today, it's January um, 3rd, January 4th, something like that. And so we found ourselves with these payment processors, we, we couldn't run $920,000. And so we started going out and trying to get other banking uh, relationships with people to find how we could um, run it, right? So we go back to these payment processors and we go back to other people. I mean, you know, I was smart enough to at least warn some of these payment processors that stuff was about to happen but i don't think they believed me and so and and i didn't think it would be that much either and so i entered into like this three month long um this this is what happened man this is what's been going down the last little bit here it's been like three months long of, of all these payment processes and all these people walking around going through my business and they 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 jumped through my terms they jumped through my conditions they jumped through my privacy policies they jumped through gdpr they jumped through um uh, my identity, confirming I am who I am, tons of docs around that, um, background checks, history checks on my own credit, my personal credit, business credit, like, I, I can't tell, like, 
the level of scrutiny that it caused was is, is it was insane. Now the negative, you have to understand that this almost killed my business. Okay, I'm telling you this right now on Sales Fun Radio. Selling too much almost killed the company. I have done that multiple times to others, never really to my own, but it wasn't because of not being able to fulfill. It was because I couldn't run the cash. So while I was unable to run the cash itself, I was like, well, I still have business expenses, man. What am I gonna go do? Oh, that's right, I'm a marketer and I sell stuff. And so what I decided to go do was I went and um, we, we fell back on the skill sets that I have. Right, um, sales message creation, offer creation, campaigns, um, marketing, and so for the last quarter, we've been, because we can't because we can't run the payments of the people that bought from us. We, um, I've been floating the full cost of fulfillment for those clients on my own dollar, not my own personal, but money that was not meant to be for that client. It was meant to do other projects. So I was like, okay, well, I got to go figure out how to go do, get this done then, and so. I have been selling stuff and being an affiliate and doing all these other things because it is what has been paying for the fulfillment, fulfillment of those clients themselves. So I went and um, that's been the challenge. That's, that's exactly what's been going on. So for the last quarter, I've been making all the changes to my terms, to my conditions, to all the, all the, man, I'm so much more legally tight right now. It's ridiculous because I just went through lots of lawyers going through my stuff, tons of scrutiny, right? <laughs> this is like pretty bulletproof now. If someone was to sue, they wouldn't get much because we've gone through asset protection and we've gone through, I mean, it's varying kinds of insurance and like all, all the stuff in the sides of the business that most of us marketing entrepreneurs do not like to go create, but it was time for me to create it. So I'm, I'm telling you this for two reasons. Uh, the first is that um, while we did, you know, a million dollar day and we couldn't run most of it, what we did though, what it's allowed us to go do is create a scenario where banks who are very, very litigious, obviously, and and want to want to cover their own butts. Banks and lawyers and payment processors and all these people have been going through and nitpicking at my stuff, right? Why don't you have this? How can you have this? Why does this say this LC? It should be that LC. Does that LC own that LC? Or is what's the relationship there? Who owns it? Uh, prove that you have the ownership. Where's your articles of organization? How, like, oh, like all the crap that I usually don't like to go in and, and do. But I gotta tell you, it's actually been really, really fun and it's been good for the company. Now, does this make sense? My business structure could not handle a million dollar day, right? That that was really good for me to learn and understand. Um, now, I, I suspected that there would be a, um, I suspected that that, that that would happen. I suspected there would be a few hiccups along the way. I did not think it would halt pretty much all cash. So the way we've uh, kept the whole uh, machine floating and running is we've been able to go through and continue to sell products and create things and be an affiliate for ClickFunnels and do all the, all the parts and pieces that we have been. And it's actually floated the cost of fulfillment for the clients that I sold because, I will, because of being, not being able to run the cash. Does that make sense? We're still in the middle of the last few pieces of fixing it, but it's been almost four months since that sale and it's been hard to run it. And um, what I don't want anyone to do, I keep turning so no one's on the camera. <laughs> I found like the least busy place possible. Um, anyway, what I don't want anyone to do is I don't want anyone to go not sell because they're afraid of those problems. You know that phrase, more money, more problems, and then people use it for an excuse to not go do stuff. It's not more money, more problems. It's more money, different problems. It's more money, more valuable problems. It's more money. Now my company can handle and has the structure of legally um, uh, quite the machine. It can handle a lot more in sales. We got awesome relationships with with you know, we're not putting all eggs in one basket with a single pay processor anymore. Um, and uh, because of that, uh, you know, there's a lot of security for the business itself. So while the first, um, you know, while the first uh, uh, sale like that was kind of, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was really cool. It brought on this onslaught of, uh... anyway, it was, it, was, it was quite intense. I was, um... <laughs> I just gotta tell you, I went and I ran a 5K on the beach a little bit ago. That is significantly harder than on the pavement. <laughs> I just about died. Oh my gosh, in the deep sand for a while too. Oh my gosh, that was like running up a sand dune. Whew. But it was a lot of fun. Anyway, it's been able to go in and I, guys, for the last little bit, all I'm getting at here is that I have had to go in and by necessity in order to capture the effects of my marketing, 
right? And the effects of my marketing is causing a lot of money and it's coming faster, which is great. Please don't, I hope that's not weird for me to say. I'm hoping that you look at what I'm telling you here and I'm documenting the journey. So this is me documenting it, right? And telling you what's worked and what hasn't. Go in and start looking at your, your business structures. I just had a conversation with a buddy a little while ago about this and he comes more from the corporate world. And he was saying like, yeah, one of the issues we're finding is that we'll go increase the sales of a you know big corporate client, but um, the, the drawback is that somebody, their actual company itself can't handle the influx of cash. It almost kills them. Not that it'll bankrupt them, but they actually don't have the systems to fulfill. My fulfillment systems are, <laughs> they are so awesome. My systems to fulfill are awesome. We have amazing legal backups and we got amazing entity structures and asset protection and all the crap that like, you know, isn't fun to do. And I wouldn't change the order of how I've done it. I'm not gonna go do all that crap until I know I've got the sales to, uh, to justify all that work. Because it's taken us a few months, you know? Background checks and back to this person. That's been, and, and just so you wanna know, if you don't know, banks typically move about the speed of the government, <laughs> okay? It's very slow. It's painstaking, and if I have been sitting around waiting, in fact, this is what happened. Last month, beginning of December, I was looking at the business bank accounts, and I was like, these are getting a little low. They shouldn't have been, because I should have been monthly running cash from the people who paid me from that million dollar day. But I was like, well, this is a really interesting challenge. How am I gonna go solve it? Right, questions in my revelation. Oh, and then that ended up being like, almost a $400,000 a month, not including that product because I asked a new question, new problem set, and, and my team and I got to flex in a way that we, we probably wouldn't have otherwise. So anyway, it's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of fun and I wouldn't have traded the journey. Um, there's definitely been some stress. I'm not gonna lie, this has been very helpful to come in here and uh, you know, come, come. I'm just gonna hang out on the beach, man. It's two comic book crews, I'm really psyched about it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna veg a little bit more than I did last year. So anyway, awesome stuff though. So. Um, just be aware of that while you're building your sales funnel, be cognizant of the fact that your business structure may not be able to handle the powerful sales machine that I teach you to build, right? I have a, um, I just, one, one more quick thing here. I know not enough stories gone on this episode, I can already feel it. One more quick thing though with this. When, when I am, let me think how to say this. When you look at what it takes to get to the two comma club, just in general, you know, we, I talk a lot about models. It's all about the model. It's all about the model. It's all about the model. Now you need the model because it's like a roadmap. Have you guys ever been on like a, a car trip with like an actual map, not your phone? Um, I don't know if you remember doing that back before phones were, you know, this was all around. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I went and, and I remember there's a road trip we went on and I had an actual map, like a paper map, <gasps> right? <laughs> And you're like, okay, this makes sense. I'm gonna go from here to here. I'm gonna go from here to here. Uh, okay, there's the map, there's my route. I'm gonna take a left here, I'm gonna take a right there. Here's the way I'm gonna go do it. Now, while you conceptually understand what it takes to get from location A to location B, is it not a little bit different while you're actually driving it? This is the exact same thing that happened, right? There's, there's a few speed bumps along the way. Oh man, I didn't plan for gas, right? Oh man, I need to go understand um, how I can, um, you know, when are we gonna eat? Is it, is it a two day road trip? Is it a long road trip, right? The actual execution of the map is different than just conceptually understanding you're gonna go from A to B. My friends, that is the exact same thing with the models that I teach, okay? It's all about the model, but then when you're in the middle of executing it, there's tons of small, there's two things that happen. There's tons of small little hiccups, tons of little things that you were not expecting. There's so many little things that happen. The details that you didn't know you need to, <laughs> the details that you wish were not important are important, right? And there's so many things that you have to go in and say like, hey, this is, um, th th this, uh, th this thing matters, right? This thing matters and I need to go figure out how to create, um, create a solution to all these minor problems. Does that make sense? You have the main core problem. Hey, how do I get from A to B? How do I execute this model? How do I build a free plus shipping funnel? How do I build a webinar funnel? Which still works, by the way. I don't know where that whole thing came from. Um, uh, am I gonna, I'm gonna go build a high ticket funnel. That's a model. But now the execution of the model itself, there's a little bit more that you're gonna have to go figure out. There's a lot of small details along the way, which is why I do not offer done for you funnel building services. You have to be included in some of those small details right? 
By the way, I don't have a funnel building agency. I have an offer building agency. Um, we just happen to build your funnel. Funnel, funnel building is easy, guys. All right, you can click, drag, and drop, boom, done. That's not why it works. It works because of the offer. What is an offer? A funnel is nothing more than a sales message and an offer. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to stop my rants. I feel like I'm on, on fire right here. Anyways, I, uh, I've been so stoked. I've been thinking about this episode quite a lot today, trying to figure out how to say what I'm trying to do on this. But uh, anyway, so that's what happened. That's what's happened with, uh, with Offer Lab, with uh, the, the aftermath of the million dollar day um, is, uh, you know, because I sold more than I thought I would, which I didn't know how much I would sell, payment processors freaked out made me sign a bunch of stuff saying I wasn't internet gambling. <laughs> they made me sign like background checks. Like it's been, it's been kind of ridiculous. Understandably from their point of view though, right? Um, and uh, it's been like hopping from payment processor to payment processor to payment processor, getting the things done, seeing the combination of each of their finance lawyers nitpicking at my business, making those structures and changes. I think it's one of the, actually, um, I can't remember what book it was. Oh, fantastic book I just finished called Who um, Who Took My Money? I think so. Who Stole My Money? Who Took My Money? By Robert Kiyosaki. But in there, he talks about how, um, you know, you need a career, but your, 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 your uh, cash needs a career too. You really have two separate careers. And um, that's been the other thing we've set up the last quarter, besides a lot of asset protection and insurance, you know, and stuff that we just, <laughs> yeah, I've never set up. <laughs> okay. Is, uh, you know, we're, 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 we're starting our investment life and uh, we're starting the career for our, my money's, uh, sorry, we're starting my money's career. Um, and uh, that's, been, that's been really interesting too. A lot of self-development, a lot of personal growth, still going to therapy, got a personal trainer, someone's making my meals. I just systemized a lot in the last three months. And uh, this, this whole thing on OfferLab not being able to run payments for, for a little bit has been turned out to be a great blessing. I haven't stopped the fulfillment. I've just been eating the cost on my own. Um, and, uh, you know, it's been sometimes, you know, what do you do for clients, man? You over deliver, right? You're gonna have a short road in this game if you don't. So we over deliver, find ways to keep over delivering. So we threw a huge event as part of the promised fulfillment for offer lab that cost about a hundred grand for me to do. Um, cause I don't skimp on events. I like cool events and, uh, you know, um, that money had to come from somewhere. So I went and sold a bunch of stuff, which was super cool. I promoted a lot of click funnels, which is really cool. Uh, got the two comma club or got the uh, the dream car award. I uh, got a big tundra, which is really fun, also. But it's just funny how I don't think I would have done a lot of that stuff had the payment processor worked. All right, um, uh, it's finishing a book by uh, Rob Kiyosaki. Yeah, like I was saying, he, he said, um, your your you need a career, but your money needs a career. And one of the best ways for you to ever find where the holes are in your personal business structure or your business business structure is for you to go try to borrow as much money as you physically can. Don't end up borrowing it, but the process that they bring you through is gonna be a vetting process that makes you better. Hey, do you guys have these things? Do you have these things? Do you have these things, right? Um, especially in the last six months, I've just worked with a lot more banks, we've worked with a lot more, and the questions that they've asked me, I'm like, oh crap. Like, you guys are gonna laugh at this, but I was like, I don't know what my finance, personal financial statement is. I filled one out for the first time like four months ago, right? And then I kept doing it for more and more and I just kept falling the rabbit hole of all the things they were asking. All Then all these lawyers is coming in saying, hey, we wanna run your money, but what about this, 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 sending me a laundry list. And it turned out to be one of the greatest blessings ever. I'm, I'm very thankful for Robert Kiyosaki's advice in that book. Go try and borrow money, go try and run a lot of money, go do whatever. And then the list they hand you back is where you could be sued. The, the list, and remember, I'm not your lawyer, I'm not a financial guru or whatever, but as far as building the business structure, that's been the name of the game for the past little bit here for me. And um, if you're like, I don't know what to do next, go try and borrow a lot of money, right? Whatever they, don't borrow it, but whatever the list they hand back to you, it's a good way to find holes. So anyway, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not with all this stuff. Um, do you have a killer offer creation? Um, uh, we've had a lot of people do six figures already. It's only been three or four months um, in Offer Lab. If you're interested in me building your offer, right, helping you design and launch it, and then we build the funnel also for you. We build your webinar slides. Um, you heard that correct. That is not an easy task. We build your webinar slides. 
Uh, There's a, a three day event you do with me. Um, we go and I hook you up with my traffic drivers. If you're interested in any of that, come apply. Go to myofferlab.com. It's myofferlab.com. I couldn't get Offerlab. <laughs> so it's myofferlab.com. Um, and uh, we've, we've been accepting, we can only do about 10 a month. That's kind of the, that's kind of the cap of what I'm doing here. So, but it's killer service, a lot of fun. Comes with a year of coaching. Um, not just from me, two other coaches as well. My personal funnel builder, um, uh, Austin Dixon, Rhonda Melody. It's been super cool. Um, and then uh, my personal copywriters are writing your copy. Anyway, it's, it's powerful stuff. A funnel is nothing without a campaign. And so we help you also create and, 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 uh, and dominate that part of the game as well. Anyways, hope you guys are doing well. Go to myofferlab.com. Love to have you guys. Love to build your funnels and your offers for you. We'll see you later. Bye. All right, I've been asked, Steve, you were the lead funnel builder at ClickFunnels. Why aren't you offering a funnel building service for people and businesses? Okay, that's a fair question. Check this out. Back in early 2016, when I joined ClickFunnels as an employee, there were only about 12,000 users of ClickFunnels compared to the 100,000 now. And there was only like 40 employees compared to the 400 that there are now, okay? What does that mean? It meant Russell and I were literally the only funnel builders, period. All the sales copy, the design, the video, building the pages, email sequences, integrating softwares together with ClickFunnels. I mean, it was, it was literally just he and I. About a year into my employment at ClickFunnels though, other funnel building team members started getting hired. We finally had a copywriter, a designer, etc. It changed my whole world as we now had a funnel team. So before I offered funnel building services, I wanted to make sure I could not only A, find my team, but that it was also airtight. What I did not tell you and what I've not been public about was that my team's already been building funnels for other people for over a year now. Testing, tweaking, building, making our process better. And so finally, I will tell you that we are ready. We've been building other sales funnels for a while. I just have not announced it until now. If you want me and my team to build your company a professional sales funnel, come get more info at myofferlab.com. Make sure you use the my, myofferlab.com. You can talk to us, learn about the process, and see what we ask of you in the process as well. It comes with a live three-day event just with me so I can teach you how to use the funnel after it's done and get traffic, as well as a year of coaching from myself and my staff. If you want us to be the nerds while you continue to run your business, if you're still looking for the core offer and funnel that supports your business revenue needs, if you'd like to hand the critical funnel building task over to professionals who do this full time, come learn how to design and launch your lucrative offer while my team of techies takes care of the funnel building and logistics for you. Get more information and apply at myofferlab.com. When you think about it, all businesses need to be able to do three things. Get leads, sell a percentage of those leads, and fulfill on what they sold. And your professional business needs a professional core offer and funnel to deliver it. We've already been doing this for a year with students who are online or offline, physical or digital, software or supplement, experience with revenue, or just starting out, etc. You get the point. Not only will we build the funnel, but I'm actually going to hook you up with the very people that I use to send various types of traffic to my own funnels. I want you to be taken care of post funnel build. If you're tied on money, it's totally fine. We have various payment and funding plans, which are also available. Come learn more and apply at myofferlab.com. Just be aware that we're actually building you a professional sales funnel. My team and I actually have very limited capacity in what we can handle monthly. So skip the line of people shouting the most popular question I'm asked, which is, Steve, will you build my funnel? The answer finally is yes. Just go start at myofferlab.com now.